So this is uh, my presentation on Prometheus 3.0, what end users need to know. Um, Martin's presentation is kind of like the exciting stuff, what's coming up. This is almost like the bad news of what's coming up about Prometheus 3.0. <laughs> uh, in case you don't know, uh, my name is Niall Dawson, I work for North Road. Um, I did a presentation yesterday, I'm from Australia, so the, the travel distance means I've got to make the most of coming out here and just checking information at you, so you might see a fair bit of me over the next couple of days and, and next week and such. Um, I'll just give you a disclaimer, this is not a what's new in QGIS 3.0 talk, so it's not a breakdown of all the new features and, and wonderful good stuff that you're getting. Um, and the reason for that is if I if I have a look at this list, this is a bit of an extract from what's called like the, the git commit log, so basically all the changes that feed into QGIS 3.0 they're going to this log. I filtered it out so it's just features which have landed and you can see there goes to pages and pages and pages and pages um, from things like uh, little things, you know, make the colour ramp editor show in line so you can kind of edit it without being blocking dialogue. What else have we got here? Um, allow label font sizes in millimetres or pixels. We've been waiting for that to come in QGIS 3.0. What else we've got here? Um, anyway, there's, there's there's like hundreds and hundreds of changes. So it's basically anybody who comes up and does a what's new in 3.0 talk will be talking for a day um, or longer. So this is a what has what's going to change for you when you download 3.0 later in the year and you load it up. What do you need to know in terms of what's changed underneath you? What workflows are going to be different and uh, things have shifted around a bit. Yeah. Um, I'll be using QGIS 3.0 to demonstrate it. It's beta, hopefully it doesn't crash. This is the first thing I'm gonna show, is, is background tasks. So when we load up QGIS 3.0, if I dump a fairly big layer in here, let me just find one to put in. So here's a layer with a couple of million points in it. Um, one thing that has come in QGIS 3.0 is this, this kind of concept of background tasks. So in, in QGIS 2.x, uh, a lot of things that you do would basically block the interface and stop you from doing other stuff while they think about what they're doing. So they're processing away, they're you know, running buffers or saving out layers and that sort of stuff. Um, the, the kind of good side of that blocking is you know what it's doing. You get a dialogue sitting there saying, saving, you know, saving raster layer or whatever, and it's got a, a progress bar and it, it sits there, you can't do anything until it finishes. A lot of those have been replaced in QGIS 3.0 with this, um, these background tasks. So if I get my vector layer here, for instance, and I save this out to a, to a shape file, because shape files are the future. Uh, so if I save this, if, if I did this in QGIS 2.x, it actually would just look like it's hung, it would sit there with an hourglass for whatever, you know, 10 minutes or something, or two minutes while it actually saves all those points out. Um, in QGIS 3.0, it actually doesn't look like it's doing anything. You, you might think, oh, you know, what's, what's happened? Um, but you'll notice down here, if you can see above the, the whiteboard, uh, let's see if I can bring this up a bit, um, there's a little progress bar churning away there 19, 20%. And that's actually showing me that there's a background task running. So you'll see quite a lot of things disappear into this, this kind of active tasks uh, thing in the status bar. So this one is saving out my points layer. You can see it's kind of churning away there. It gives you a progress report. <coughs> you can cancel some of the tasks. Some of them allow you to cancel and some of them don't, depending on what the actual task is. Um, and eventually when that finishes, well, my, you can see like I can keep I can keep using my map. I can keep doing other stuff, you know, changing my thing, loading in other layers and that while that task kind of progresses. Eventually when that finishes, get me closer. It'll, it'll load that, that result layer back into, into QGIS. Um, so if you go into QGIS 3.0 and you try and save out a, a vector layer or a raster layer, there we go. So export vector layer has been completed and it's loaded the result into, into the canvas there. If it looks like it's not actually doing something, check the status bar and it might be processing that, uh, that request in the background. So that is... So far that's been done for saving raster and vector layers, uh, saving map renders, so 
QGIS 3.0 has got this thing if you go to save your map as an image, you actually get this option here um, to, to kind of put in your DPI. So you can put in something stupid like that, oh, 3000 DPI or whatever, and you save it, that will run in the background, it won't block QGIS anymore. <coughs> Oops. Um, processing algorithms, so when you run like a, a buffer or something like that in processing or uh, a dissolve or a clip or something like that, that'll also disappear into that little status bar control and you can keep doing stuff while it goes. Right. Uh, the next big one I want to show you is that there's been a lot of changes made to the on-the-fly projection handling. So if I went into, into my QGIS 3.0 and I load in Points layer in where was that? Put this one in. Put right. Um, QGIS two point whatever had a, a quite confusing setting in the project properties about. OTF or on the fly projection, it was a little checkbox to allow you to turn it on or off. Um, so that setting is basically whether or not data from different with different CRSs should be reprojected so they sit in the same place on the map. Uh, it, so in my in my project here, I've got one layer in a, a local coordinate system, and then I've got one in uh, in WGS uh, eighty four. With the on the fly projection, it's putting them in the same spot. So it basically knows that one of them needs to get get reprojected so that they sit where they should. Um, the, the problem with the approach used in, in QGIS 2 is that it looked like that setting was only supposed to apply to rendering. So it was kind of advertised as a on the fly projection for when you're rendering a map. But behind the scenes, it was actually used that same little tick box was, was used for a whole lot of different logic. So things like calculating areas, calculating distances, um, whether or not ellipsoid should be used when you're you know, calculating those. Um, and the, the problem with that was, first off, it was really difficult for users to understand why this setting that only looked like it applies to rendering the map is actually changing the distances and, and the measurements they're getting out of QGIS. Um, and secondly, it also was really confusing from a developer's point of view because a lot of plugins weren't correctly handling that. And so the distances you might get from the plugin that was trying to measure something was slightly different because they weren't using the ellipsoid uh, value from the property from the project. So that has been changed here now. I have no idea why my fonts and messes, but um, instead of the old checkbox that said on the fly projection on or off, there's now this one that says no projection for unknown slash non-earth projection. And if I switch that one, it's disabled a whole lot of stuff here. I can't choose projection anymore for my project. It's basically now treating everything as just Cartesian. Whatever the X and Y for that node is, that's where it gets plotted. Um, so now my my two layers, which are in different CRSs, now show in totally different spots in my non-earth projection land. There we go. So we've got some sitting up here and we've got some sitting way down here. Um, they, it's no longer reprojecting the other layer. They sit on top of it, it's just saying the X's and Y's I treat as literal values and you get what you get. Um, the, the consequence of that as well is it means that all the measurements, so all your distance measurements and all your area measurements are forced to become unitless. Um, so you can see in here now, I don't have that little drop down to say I want my measurements in kilometres. Uh, they are now all just basically planar measurements. So that's a that's a side effect of switching off that, or switching on that no projection setting for your project, is it basically means everything is treated as just a big <coughs> flat plane. Um, so the end, the end uh, result of that means that measurements should actually be a lot more predictable in QGIS 3.0. By default, your projects have a projection, everything will be handled for you behind the scenes, and you don't need to kind of get in and fiddle with it. If, however, you do for some reason want to use this no, no projection mode, again, it should be more predictable as to what's actually happening with those calculations. So, on the fly projection is basically always on. The new no projection option, everything's Cartesian, treated literally, um, and there's benefits to that approach. 
but it's different. So another thing that has changed in 3.0 is we've basically gone through, in Qt 2.x there was a whole lot of these uh, what we call core plugins, and they're basically the ones which you install QGIS and you get uh, 15 or so plugins that are, are basically built into QGIS. A lot of them aren't enabled by default, and you have to manually go in there and tick them on. Um, we have cleaned that up a lot because the, the problem with that approach is it means that you sit in front of one computer with QGIS installed and buttons will be there that are different to when you go and sit on another one, even though they haven't actually installed any new plugins as such. It just makes it, things a bit unpredictable. Um, the other the other kind of issue with these these core plugins, a lot of them were un unmaintained. So people had developed them years ago, put them into the code base, and they were kind of sitting off in their own little thing. They weren't really part of the main code base, but um, no one was really looking after them. So bad news is, if you were using the Oracle Raster plugin or DXF to shape, they've gone in 3.0. They've been pulled out and are no longer uh, present. Um, the rationale behind those two is, again, they, they hadn't seen any development in years. No one was actually looking after them. Um, they are, they were plugins that there are better tools that do that sort of thing. So DXF for shape is basically redundant. You should be using uh, GDEL for that sort of thing. Um, An Oracle raster, I actually couldn't find anyone who knew what that plugin was supposed to do. So, or was actively using it, so that one's gone. Um, if anyone is invested, wants to see those back, they basically need to take take charge of it and say, I'm going to step up, I'm going to maintain it, I'm going to make it into a Python plugin that's pushed out through the repository. A lot of these other plugins, so uh, heat map, road graph, um, geometry snapper, raster terrain analysis, interpolation and detail tools, they've been taken away from this sort of core installed by default but not enabled by default approach to actually becoming processing algorithms. Um, and this is actually a really good thing because instead of being these kind of dead end things where you can run a heat map but it has to be done manually, then you get your end result. You can't use it as part of a, a bigger model where you might want to do multiple steps and the heat map's part of it or the geometry snap is part of it or uh, you know, the interpolation is just one step of it. Now that they're in processing, they can be used as models. Um, they can also be used by other plugins. So it's basically become integrated into the actual core of QGIS. So that's a, that's a good thing. But when you go and you install QGIS 3.0 and you look to install, to switch on your heat map plugin, mm -hmm. you won't see it listed there anymore. It's actually part of processing. You'll see it listed as a processing algorithm that everybody who installs QGIS 3.0 has just got there. Uh, this was actually covered in a lot more detail yesterday, but just for completeness, I'll put it here again today. So the node tool and the move features tool changed from the click and hold and drag approach to this click click approach that lets you use it along with the, the CAD doc and uh, has multi features edit and that sort of stuff. Um, again, covered in a lot more detail yesterday, but the main thing is when you go to use it in QGIS 3.0, it behaves differently. If you try and click and drag, it won't work properly. You need to do click on the node, move your mouse, and click where you want it to go. Right, some more bad news project compatibility. If you were using a project that was originally developed in QGIS, one point whatever, it may have actually been using this really old labeling engine. Um, I think it was about QGIS 2.0 maybe. There was a, a brand new kind of labeling engine was introduced that had all these things that we sort of take for granted nowadays like the curve labeling support and the collision detection which means that labels don't sit on top of each other. But uh, all the way up to QGIS 2.18, you could actually load a project that was made in QGIS one point whatever with this old kind of really basic labeling and it would still work okay. It would actually um, switch on this hidden deprecated label setting. So so your project would look the same as it did in 1.7. Uh, that's gone now. So if you try and load a project from QGIS 1 point whatever, you, you'll lose all your labels. I don't know if that's gonna affect anyone, but it's not good. Uh, there have been other things that we've changed in the project compatibility which means that various pieces of code that were sort of there, the transition <coughs> features that were uh, changed in earlier 2.x versions, that, that compatibility code has been ripped out. So the consequence there is that if you try and load a project like from 
2.2 or 2.4 into 3.0, uh, there's certain features which may just get dropped, uh, or certain settings that you've got in that project that may not translate exactly to 3.0. The, the secret to making sure that they work well is to open them in a recent futures version, so 2.14 or 2.18, save them and then open them to 3.0. So that's only really a, a, a issue if you've got old projects that you haven't been working on in recent futures versions. Everything from recent futures versions will translate without issue. Uh, okay, another piece of bad news is that um, User settings don't translate between QGIS 2 and QGIS 3. So when you fire up QGIS 3, it means that all the, the configuration options and that that you've set up for QGIS 2.0 aren't automatically transitioned across. Um, you basically start with a clean slate and you have to go in there and set up all your connections again, set up your, your interface how you want it. You get the off-the-shelf package again. There's, there's been various talk about making a, a kind of translator for the settings because it, it is quite annoying to reset up all your WMSs and all your, your posters connections and that. Um, and probably it will end up being a, a, a plugin or something like that that people can use to, to transition those settings. But as of today, nobody has actually done the work to implement that. What else have we got? Processing. So processing has undergone a large kind of um, a large body of work in 3.0. Um, part of that is that the whole back end of it has been ripped up, taken out of Python and put into C++. So it's a lot faster. Um, hopefully this, the parts of it are a bit more stable. Um, but there's also changes which affect how it's used. So one of the, the biggest consequences of that is that a number of the providers that were included by default in processing in QGIS 2 aren't available anymore in QGIS 3.0 and have basically been moved off from included with the default install to third party plugins. So those are specifically the, the Tor Dem, LAS Tools and R plugins or providers. Um, the rationale there was that, that those three providers basically relied on um, external tools and if you didn't have the if you didn't have Tordem or LAS tools installed, you would get these items that, that did nothing because they're, they're trying to call other programs that you haven't installed. Um, so by moving them into uh, manually installed plugins that you get through the plugin repository, it, it basically means that you can be sure that the people who are installing them should have those third party dependencies and things generally work better. Um, what else have we got? The processing options has moved, so now it's no longer sitting under the under the processing menu. There's no longer a settings option there. It's been shifted off into its own little section in the general QGIS options. Um, in in QGIS 3.0, plugins can actually put entries in there as well. So hopefully, we'll see most plugins go from having their own individual menu entries for uh, configuring the plugin to all being put into this general settings options place, like find the stop shop. Uh, this is a good news. So QGIS 3.0, when, when you were doing processing tasks in QGIS 2.x, there was this requirement that all the layers have to be in the same CRS. So if you were doing like a, a clip of one layer with a mask that was in a different CRS, you'd first have to reproject one of them so they would both be in the same same projection, um, otherwise it just didn't work properly. The, that's no longer required in, in 3.0. You can take your mask layer from a different CRS and it will just know that I need to reproject this one for it to work properly. Um, so that's actually good news because it means you don't have to make those temporary tables all the time. Of, I'm just going to have to reproject this one so I can do the next step of my analysis. Uh, there is also well, there have also been changes to some of the processing algorithms. So we, we decided that 3.0 was a good time to basically go through and sort of clean up this list of, of algorithms, algorithms that we have available that have grown kind of organically over time, where there was ones which duplicated each other's functionality and this sort of stuff. So there was, uh, there was for instance, two algorithms included by default to make grids. Um, and there was, some of them did one thing and there was kind of a bit of overlap but none of them did 
everything. Uh, so that's all been cleaned up and they've all been smashed together. The really bad news of that is that processing two models aren't compatible with processing three and QGIS three. So if you have models that you've developed for QGIS two, you have to recreate those ones in QGIS 3.0 and you have to look through and you have to find out what, um, how those algorithms map from two to three. It's, yeah, I, I don't like this really, but it's kind of, we, we can't find a good alternative um, to, to automatically get through. The, I guess the, the good thing is you can have QGIS 2 and QGIS 3 installed, they're running side by side, and hopefully it's not too much work for you to basically recreate your models. But it's bad. Um, a, a, another interface change that has happened for 3.0 that you might notice is in QGIS 2 and early versions, there was this big mash of kind of different different ways of setting transparency or opacity or alpha for, for objects. Um, so some things like labeling used transparency, uh, other things like symbology used opacity, and it just got a little bit confusing for users because all of a sudden one of them, if you slide the slider all the way to the right, disappears, but when you do it in a symbol it actually makes it more prominent. Um, they have all been replaced with opacity, so now across the interface everything is opacity and it's all consistent wording and consistent uh, scales for that. That also applies to other things like uh, there was a, a kind of a mix of outline colour versus border colour versus, um, I can't remember, there's some other terms for it, but that has all been replaced with the, the term stroke, so it's just consistent and sort of matches with other desktop publishing software. Um, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll speed up a bit. Rotation and scale is nothing that was made consistent, so labelling had rotation in the opposite direction to, to symbols. And this made it really annoying, like if you had a, a field in your table you were trying to rotate labels and symbols to, because one of them was rotating clockwise and the other was anti-clockwise, labelling lost out here and it's been transformed to fit the rest of it. Same with the scales and labelling. It had the definition of max and min scales backwards to the rest of the interface, that's changed. Um, loading up old projects that should happen transparently, but it's only if you go in there and look at the interface it'll look slightly differently if you're used to accounting <coughs> that one's not so important, I'll come back to that. That one, we'll skip a few. The last one I'll cover that's a, another big change is um, this unified add layers window. So in, in QGIS 2, there was uh, maybe 10 more buttons down here. So you had one for add post use, add WFS, add XXX. Um, in QGIS 3.0, they have all been merged into this one unified open data source window. So I click here and this is where they're all sitting now. So instead of uh, multiple different icons for each each uh, data source, they all have been added to this one dialog and that's where you get in there now and you can add your, your, your Postgres layers or your RASLIC and all that sort of stuff. But they're all sitting in that one window. Um, this is still, I guess, a work in progress. There's, there's things we we want to add still to this, to this dialog to streamline it a little bit. But the, the goal is to, to reduce that user confusion of having so many options to add layers to just, that's the button I click to add my layers and then they make the choice to transform it. Um, and that's it.